Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Hi, and welcome to TFLP. Uh... We, uh, tonight we're doing another pre-recorder today, I should say, I guess, uh, when this actually airs. Uh, so we're doing another pre-record, just getting some in the bank here so that, uh, you know, when we're off that we can, uh, still have some content, uh, every week. So, uh, so tonight I am, uh, or today I'm, I'm joined, uh, by, uh, Jim over here to my right. Hey, the new bald one. Oh, I've been balding for a long time. I just stopped trying to fight it. Or that, yeah. And then uh, uh, down down below me, we've got uh, Jack, who's dusting and cleaning his figures. No, I'm performing robot surgery this time. Anyways, hi, everybody. Robot surgery? On, on which uh, character? Ah. The OG boy. Oh. Yeah, the OG. There we go. Which one do you like better between that and the new one? I actually don't have the new one, so I can't really say. No. There we go. And All then I know Mark... is I found this for 90 bucks, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then, last but not least, uh, I've got Anna. That dazzle strike. Whoopty squat. <laughs> Lionizer. So, so I yes. I found it's just lionizer. <laughs> Anna, it's lionizer was, was green. Green anizer. Okay, so so lionizer green. sneezed. Which one's the green one? Sure. <laughs> what, That's what's fine. The what? What's the green one called? I can't remember. Dazzle Strike. Dazzle Strike. Yes, thank you. It's a beautiful name. There you go. Do you have the flame effects on it? Uh, not right now because it's in cat mode. Then it would be poopy and fire. That sounds. That's a bad thing. Yeah. I guess we can make it poop some fire real fast. Best weapon ever. There. See now it's now it's a poop fire. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, Crap and fire. That's what that Starting on the right foot, right? Yes, definitely. So, uh, so tonight we're actually going to be talking about some of those little guys. Um, so we'll, we'll be talking about uh, our, our favorite little minions, play features, all that type of thing of the you know original line, and then uh, you know just kind of the the last several uh, lines as well. So, so, so Jim, this is your topic. So uh, why don't you start us off? Well, the focus was, I guess, just general minions overall throughout the brand's history. But <laughs> pardon me. But I was, I was thinking of, you know, kind of their importance, you know, their their impact on on the brand. I'm, I think of characters such as, uh, well, take take you know Transformers Armada. You've got you know the Perceptor Minicons, the Skyboom Shield, uh, Star Saber. Uh, G1, you've got the, the cassette tape minions, you know, from Rumble, Ravage, Frenzy, Ratbat, Laserbeak, Overkill, Slugfest, Squawk Talk, Beast Box, I mean, so on and so forth. You get the idea. Uh, Target Masters, Head Masters, Power Masters, Robot Masters, I don't know. Just something else with the word okay. master. But I mean, but, I mean there's, there's been sidekicks and partners and you know, number twos all, all through the line, you know, in, in various forms. And I figured, you know what? It might be time to shine a little bit of spotlight on them. Give them their, give them their due. Action Master Partners. There's another one. That's a good one. 
No. You uh, you guys have any uh, any notable ones that you can think of, or any, any that have any maybe any special meaning to you at all? Oh, a lot of them, actually, because so, I really go ahead, Lucas. Oh no, go ahead. I really got into the hobby because I was a little bit younger. I really got into the hobby when Masters were out. You know, that's when I was like three or four years old and old enough to complain and nag until I got a toy. And so, you know, had Masters, Target Masters and things were out. So I could um, get those things. So for me, like most of my Transformers collecting has always had some sort of weird symbiotic robot relationship. So it's been a lot of them for me um, have that. I would say what, what's always been kind of like special for me or memorable is headmasters because I lost like all of them and I had to pretend they existed for like a decade. <laughs> That's the one thing I kind of feared about Titans return is like when I just mm-hmm. trying to put them on and all of a sudden, you know, finger slip and there he goes underneath, you know, whatever. It's like, where did he go? <laughs> so when Titan returns came out, let's see how many years ago was that? Was that like, that would have been 2016? 2016? Like late yeah. 2016? So yeah. my my oldest was uh, five at the time. And so I was really freaked out, especially on some of those bigger ones, that he was going to lose the figures. So I actually took all of the heads off of, like, the Voyagers, <laughs> Deluxes, Leaders, whatever, and I replaced them all with the little Titan Masters. And so then that way I wouldn't like if I lost one of those, it's like, oh, whatever, I'll go spend another five bucks. But I mm-hmm. didn't want to, to lose it on the, the other figure. So, um, so, yeah, I tried to preemptively, you know, account for losing that. So we never ended up losing any any heads, but. The only head you lost was yours. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. By collecting more and more, right? That was the joke, I think, maybe. Right. Gotta catch them all. Yes. Okay, man. I, I think that's a good place to start, though. Like, one problem with these guys, and I always like to start on the negatives because that's who I am, but <laughs> one problem with these guys is that they're losable. And once you lose them, your figure's incomplete in one way or another, especially with Headmasters, yes. because then they are decapitated, and that was never... Like, I never really thought that was very pretty looking for my play sessions as a child. Um, and it has affected their value, surprise. Yeah, having having no noggin is kind of problematic. And I, I guess... mean, like, the target... Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, the target I, I... masters are fine by themselves. I was That's all I was going to say. But for headmasters, it's essential. One thing, I, it's kind of related. I mean, it... it it fits to complete the figure. The one problem I had was the 07 Deluxe Barricade. I'm not sure if anybody else had this problem, oh, but Frenzy. Frenzy. That little booger always irked me every time I messed with him because there was one time I actually lost him. I found him. I put him in a safe place so he can go back with Barricade, and all of a sudden I lose him again, and I have not <laughs> seen him. That was at least 12 years ago. Funny story. I, I think at this point I, you're not getting it back. No, yeah, probably not. That was like two houses ago. So yeah, I'm that. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm generally know. not one to usually read instruction booklets most times. I had barricade for like almost two months before I realized that frenzy was in there. <laughs> I knew he was in never there. Never occurred to me. I knew he was in there before I even opened up barricade. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I realize that now. But, you know, just... I, I looked at the back of the box before I obviously tore it open because mm-hmm. at that point in my life, I never really cared about packaging. I just wanted the figure in my hand like now. Um, but yeah, that it just irked me how they're starting to make them so small. It was at that point. I mean, even for, you know, I think Frenzy was like maybe that big. Compared mm-hmm. to a Titan Master, no, nah, it's somewhat okay but still it's like they're starting to make these things small now this is not going to be fun if you lose them that's why you keep them safely displayed on a shelf where they can gather dust hey I was 
Not even nine years old. All I had okay, was a so, tub. So get a short shelf. All I had was a plastic tub. That was it. Turned it upside and down. And I liked it. Tub. Yes, I liked it a lot. <laughs> but that's that's a funny bit of like dichotomy. There is that. I really think that the minion figures, as as Jim is putting it, or you know the headmasters and target masters and all of that, I really think those are excellent play patterns for kids. Like I think those are really fun. I really enjoyed them as a kid. I liked having little guys I could play with really easy. In addition to the more difficult, more complicated, bigger guys, they were really cool. Um, I liked the fact that I could you know put it in car mode and have a driver. That kind of stuff was really fun. But at the same time, even though it's great for the target kid audience, it's also terrible for the target kid audience because they don't mm-hmm. have shelves to put it on. They have fins to lose them in. They have, like, the ground to lose them on. They lose them no. constantly. This is terrible. How? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I get it. <laughs> that, that, that really was those the spare G1 body and I took the Titan Master and pop it in there that works it did slightly annoy me that the new uh, Titan Masters were smaller though than the original Headmasters just because like originally when, yeah. it, when they announced it I was like oh this would be cool like I can just buy some $20 donor bodies and then just you know, get the headmasters, but it didn't work. Yeah. Well. I mean, that that one actually does look okay, but um, a lot of them don't look right. Well, what I did is I took like a little little sliver of tape and just kind of wrapped it around uh, Terrible's head, and you, and that just kind of takes up the slack inside the uh, the torso. But That's fair. Yeah, it works. Well, so I, I would say that. Um, my best memory of the sidekicks is is that uh, when I can't even remember what year it was, uh, but I got a blaster for for Easter, and mm. so I got the set, and it came with uh, Ramhorn and uh, Steeljaw. So that was that was kind of my favorite little set of of guys because I really like the the cassette bots in general, um, and, and just having that that play pattern, you know, where they come out of your chest and uh, you're are assisting the big bot. I, you know, I, I thought it was really it was really neat. So, um, yeah, cassette the cassettes in general kind of have a special place in my heart. Yeah, I kind of know what you mean. Um, among the very first Transformers I ever got as a kid uh, would have been probably eighty eight. Um, when I was a kid, I was, I was in kindergarten at the time, and we lived like a block and a half away from a Kmart. And so I, I don't know, I don't know what the reason was or or what, but uh, it, uh, my brother and I, my my brother was like ten, I was like four. Uh, we and uh, we we ended up going with my dad, and we walked the, the block and a half to the Kmart. I don't remember if we were there specifically for getting toys or if he just got us toys while he was getting other stuff but that's i guess not keep the, you calm while you're shopping around that, that's what i'm thinking but uh i ended up with squawk talk and beast box and uh a little over a year later uh well a little over a year and one house fire later i ended up with uh, grand slam and rain dance so i ultimately had at one point in time uh, a total of both of the G1 combiner cassettes. And I've always loved those characters. They, they were just neat. I mean, I remember, you know, Ravage and Laserbeak and them, you know, or, or seeing uh, seeing Eject and Rewind at the store. But these sets that I got, they combined together, and the other guys didn't do that. That was cool, you know. Uh, and I, I actually, to this day, I still have about 75% of my Grand Slam. My original Grand Slam. What That's 25% do you not have? You know the section that holds the two little gray cannons? is basically like, like the, the meat and potatoes of the cassette shape. Uh, that, that's, yeah. that's mostly not there. I've got one piece of it. 
uh, I, I had this weird phase when I was about nine or ten where I, I used to like to find screwdrivers and take things apart just to see how they work. That was me. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that was right. me too. So but that was uh, like two or three for me. Yeah. But for for slam dance, the core part of the torso and both arms are intact, and then I have like one little section that would attach to the underside of that big backpack part. That's it. I've since reacquired Grand Slam, but I still have my original. Um, but the, the, the cassette combiners were really awesome, and having seen uh, in the past... You went quiet. Jim, Jim went quiet. You yep. cut out, Jim? I could hear, hear you for a minute now. Okay, yeah, I think I can hear you now. There you go. Yeah, try yeah. talking. Okay. That was weird. I... Anyway, um, but now we have a uh, train of thought. Just flew off the tracks of the planes. Because that come on. Yes, that's what it was. Um, with the, the Bumblebee movie packs, that, uh, what was that? Entertainment Earth or, or something. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was like the, the gold colored movie, B, and it came with the G1 the, cassettes. The dinosaur ones? Uh, yeah. Yep. The combined. And then now, is it the other ones, or is it just a re release of those same ones uh, that's coming with the Hasbro Pulse pack? Is, is, that, the, is that the same thing? Noizu and Dial. I can't uh, remember. Because there, there were two other uh, cassette combiners besides Slam Dance and Squawk Box. But I don't know if the, if this is the same one from the Bumblebee packs in a G1 card. or. Let's say, or I'll have what? to look it up here. Yeah, sure. I would too, but I, I can't really open a tab without my computer freezing. Mm. Okay, I can't are. multitask I don't know, PC. But anyway, uh, so uh, beyond the cassettes, uh, there was also, like like was also mentioned, the Headmasters. Um, and, you know, I, I, I mentioned that, that house fire that I had where I ultimately lost uh, uh, Squawk Box. Uh, after that, I got Slam Dance, but I also got a Corey Bull. And that, that was actually one that, uh, well, not not the same one. So I've, I've had to acquire, but uh, one of them holds uh, a lot of sentimentality for me uh, because of that. It was a gift from my great grandmother. But uh, that was one of the coolest things because you had the head that comes off and becomes the pilot, uh, Fred. And that that was just a really cool play pattern because if you didn't want to have it in robot mode, you could take it and turn it into the dog Ghostbusters. Uh, I, I'm still torn as far as whether the Corbel is meant to be Ben's Clortho or Zool, but I don't, I don't suppose it really matters. Uh, but the one downside to that, though, is when, when you open the back hatch to put him in so you can pilot in the beast mode, you risk damaging the hinge and ultimately mine snap. Oh. I, I guess that's a common thing with that. Uh, Jack, do you have any? Minions or psychics of note? Well, obviously, the frenzy thing, that wasn't my best memory. That was my freaking worst because, you know, screw that little piece of crap. Yeah. Um, my best memory was pretty much Armada because I think I've shared it, I don't know how many times on the show, that I've got my start on during Armada. So mm. when I had. Armada Prime, I had both versions, the original and then the uh, Power Links, I think it was. Oh. Um, the little <laughs> spark plug that came with, whether it was yellow or gold, um, I always totally loved playing with that. That guy totally, was fun. It's totally Bumblebee. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, just look, look at the head skull. That was totally Bumblebee. Yes. They just didn't have trademark. Yeah. Um, that was one of my favorite toys ever. I mean, I loved... Optimus, but that little spark plug I even loved oh, just a little bit more. Just a little bit. Um, I think besides those, Cog from uh, my 
G1 reissue Fort Max. That guy was fun. Oh, um, yeah. I think that's pretty much those two. Can't really. Uh, I guess technically the Generations Thrilling 30 Legends that came with the little Target Masters. Oh, those yeah. Those were actually kind of. Kind of sick. I think my favorite one out of that was Waspinator, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, little Waspinator, he, he came with Starscream? Yes. Okay. And For a little Chop Shop. Little... Beast Wars Easter egg. Yeah, it was Chop Shop that came with uh, Megatron. That's what. That's right. Yep. Yeah, they were fun. Those were fun. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't catch that when... association. But, yeah, uh, that, that that was referenced to when what was it, Starscream came and possessed Waspinator. Yep. In yeah. uh, East Wars. Yep. Oh, it's kind of, yeah, I, I never never noticed that. Yeah, it makes it cool. Did but not connect those dots. Back in the day when $10 bought you a Legends figure and a uh, Target Master. Yes. That's Instead why I love the, the other. That's why I love the Generations Throwing 30 stuff. Yes. Because the Legends got you the little Target Masters, the Deluxes got you comics. <laughs> The Voyagers are triple changers and, you know, whatever else. Right. And then you got Metroplex. Plus we got Skybite. I mean, yeah. yeah. Skybite, Tangor, uh, what else? Skids. We got freaking Skids. Waspinator, Armada Starscream, my favorite figure out of that line. I want to I wanna go back to the idea of mini cons with you know, Armada Star Scream is the um, segue there. Yes. I like Mini Cons as a concept because for most of those figures, and I mean, full disclosure, I don't like the Unicron trilogy. I, there's very few figures from that line that I really find all that cool to have around. I do have a tidal wave. I did go out my yes. way to get one of those. Okay, I'll, I'll forgive you. I think he's super cool. Um, cause tidal wave is know, fantastic. Right? The Especially other the one, hand boat. <sighs> Uh, the other ones aren't really my thing. But one thing I really like about what they did with the mini cons, even though I don't really love many of the mini con designs, is that they were purely optional, right? They were like enhancement figures. Uh-huh. Like they could activate action features, but pretty much any mini con could activate the action feature as long as you have one laying around. So if you lost your spark plug, God forbid, um, you would still be able to play with Optimus, right? And if you yep. lose Optimus, you can still play with Sparkplug. Yep. And same thing with Hotshot and Jolt or anybody else. Which, so, if you lost Optimus, something that's... Yeah, something's wrong. <laughs> no, that thing was a solid shot. Jack, that was like Jack we lost your video. Yeah, I turned it off. I lost a spring for uh, Mr. Primal. So, oh, okay. uh, okay. give me a quick moment. You'll yeah, never yeah. see it again. Oh, oh you'll have... find it. Positivity. If, if, it's the, if it's the scale of spring, I think it is, you might be able to substitute one if you uh, if you got like some wire clippers, substitute one from an ink pen. I'll find uh, it. That it it's, it's been years since I took a primal apart. Uh, optimal. At least Anna has faith. I'll give her that. It's, it's on I'll the floor find. somewhere. It, it depends on the carpet. It's shiny. Foot, You'll find it. It's a dark brown spring on a tan four. I think I have a good chance. Oh, okay. I was going to say, because if, if it's hardwood, it would have bounced. If it's carpet, it's probably down in the fibers. Look yeah, that dooms and the glooms over here. I I think I've found maybe one spring I've dropped ever <laughs> on a carpet. Every other spring I've dropped on a carpet has ended up in freaking Narnia or somewhere. Anyway, sorry for my distraction. We were talking about uh, little Target Master dudes mini or cons. something. Yeah. Mini cons. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Next time, yeah. Jack finds a spring in his carpet. Uh, Yay! Oh, in his foot though, it might hurt. Um. Anyway, I, like I said, I did like the mini cons from a design perspective because they were optional. Like you could, you if you lost them, you could substitute in a different one. It wouldn't be a big deal. There were so many of them. Even if you lost one, you're likely to have some laying around. I'm not and sure if you're, you're talking about springs or talking about mini cons. Mini cons. <laughs> mini cons. Okay, um, that's what I figured. But anyway, I, th- I thought they were a pretty good idea. Now, I didn't particularly like them. And I've actually gotten rid of all my mini cons, even though I love Target Masters and things like that. Um, but I think they were a, a novel concept. So. 
to kind of segue from that, the question I want to ask you guys is what do you think of the effect that a like a master style minion has on the look of a figure? For instance, there's a lot of Titans Returns characters that I wish were not headmasters. Like, they gave me a Nautica figure, but she's got this goofy-looking head that doesn't look right for her at all, um, because her head really needs to be rounded in order to exist. I want to know where the Maxima figure is. We never got a Maxima. We never got a lot of things. Yeah. A uh, couple looks freaking weird. I know that for sure. <laughs> just looking at him now, yeah, he does. Yeah, a lot of them do. A lot of them just I'll, like everyone had this like perfectly square head because mm-hmm. of it. I feel like it actually stood out more in the Titan Masters than it did back in G1 because yeah. back in G1 the toys were so square anyway, whatever. But with these new guys, they're like nice skinny flexible articulated figures with these very square heads yep and a lot of them had great face plates i just feel like that head everyone happy to have the same head shape kind of hurt some of the figures what do you guys think yeah and i think uh it was kind of a little weird too because all of the different size classes had the same size heads so <laughs> that was a little odd too that well you know. on on the like the leader class the the face plates were, yeah. were larger were pronounced but yeah. beyond that right but then they weren't really compatible with the smaller figures anyway well, sure. if you take like blaster's head and put it on deluxe you've yeah. got this weird like giant face without a helmet it looks kind of weird it, it, he's he's just torque three supercomputer that's all yeah why not yeah. I, I got a kick out of the fact that on some of the uh, some of the characters that, from Titans Return that were not previously headmasters, uh, that their Titan Master partners were miniature versions of themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, like like Perceptor here, okay? You, uh, I've got him in some kind of jet mode. I thought of it's just me being creative, but anyway, um, he. If you look at the Titan Master in robot mode, it's the, the toy accurate face plate. It's basically just a mini perceptor. Same with Blaster, same with Soundwave. Uh, Galvatron comes with a mini Megatron. It's what, what they call a Doom Shot or something. Like Said that. that for Galvatron? Or Nebulon, something like that. Is what, what, for Galvatron? What, what, yeah, yeah. I was just about to say that. I'm like, uh, doesn't Galvatron's little headmaster look like Megatron? Yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. Um, or, or heck, even, uh, oh, what was it, uh, Twin Inferno, uh, his little, uh, Titan Master is a Battle Beast. Yeah. So it's like the Tiger Battle Beast with the eye patch. I mean, how fun is that? Yeah, they did some fun things with them. I, I really did like Titan Masters, especially playing with the ones with their little vehicles that were like action master style. Yeah. I yeah. actually liked to mess with those, even though they were unpainted and kind of frustrated me, but um, they were fun toys. I just did not like the effect that the square head aesthetic had on every character. Some characters, it worked well, like hard head looks perfect with that square head. It's great. It does. Uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of people that uh, they're, they're not fan of, <laughs> they're not really fans of squ- those with square heads. Um, yeah. Uh, so for me, I think the only one from Titans Return that really bothered me was Galvatron. And it really annoyed yes. me because ninety five percent of that figure is fantastic, but then the fact that they they threw the head on and I like the idea of a, a Megatron turning into Galvatron. However, yeah. it made the head look stupid because it's like I had this great like plain gray head. I think if they would have made him purple. It would have made so much more sense, but and if you didn't have that flip up is. mask, yeah, and the flip up mask, like that was stupid. So, like for me, most of the figures worked really well. Titans Return was probably overall my like favorite line before Siege, um, mm-hmm. but like that figure really annoyed me because I really wanted to have a good Galvatron, and it was almost there. 
You know, there, there's a there's a couple of uh, psychics or minions, whatever you want to call them, uh, that just came to mind that actually, uh, now that I think back on it, really kind of blew me away. Um, backtracking a little bit to uh, Transformers Armada, uh, Armada, Overload. Yes. The Minicon yes. was the one in control of that big behemoth. Uh, what, what, what it turned into, the, the Matrix cannon, I think they called it. Uh, I mean, that, that was just a cool figure. Uh, even by G1 standards, it, it just it was blocky, had the, the squarish head. Didn't even have... I don't even think it had a mouth. Did it have a mouth? I don't think it had a mouth. But anyway. Um, but you you had... Any bit of little minicon. Huge freaking trailer. Uh, and I just I don't know I just I One thought that figure was favorite really cool. figures. Yeah, uh, plus it was it had the compatibility with with Optimus and, and, and Jetfire power pants. Um, so it's like it's like the sidekick's sidekick in in, in a way. But uh, that was a fully integrated design though. Like they they built it around having him be the chest that comes out Power Master Prime style. Right, right. Now, I I thought that was really cool. Um, and then another one that is in a similar vein is uh, Combiner Wars Ultra Magnus with uh, Minimus uh, Ambus. Minimus yeah. Ambus. I keep, I keep wanting to call him Alpha Triumph because he looks like Alpha Triumph. Mine is Alpha Triumph. Did that in the Takara. I, in Takara, I know. But I don't know. I just it gym. was different to not have a, a white semi cab. With its own robot mode, and and instead to just have that more of a more of a capsule or a shell. Uh, but but it was still really neat. Yeah, I thought it was a really good one. Ultra Magnus from you know being so so much armor to being more a a large suit. You know, like like a, like a battle mech or something. That, that was just really cool. Yeah, I know it's a neat version. I. I also think that, and I want to ask you guys this, does it help the figure no. to, like, this whole minion concept to be strongly integrated in the fiction? So, for instance, you know, the whole Minimus Ambus thing was, like, a huge reveal in the comic. It was something that people either loved or hated. I love it as a huge Ultra Magnus fan. I think it's cool to add a different version of the character. And being able to own that is way more exciting that if it was just, this is, you know, Power Master Ultra Magnus with his chest friend that doesn't get explained in the fiction at all, I really think it, it helps if there's already a relationship between the minion and the big guy in the fiction to really, well, like, make the whole thing cooler. What do you guys as, think? As far as yeah. any kind of storyline, whether it be comics or cartoon, anything that can help further flesh out the character and add more meat and potatoes to the story is always going to be a positive. Um, in, in my view, I, I don't, I don't see it, how it could ever be a, a negative thing to tell more of that character's story. If anything, it, it could, it could make you, you know, uh, I don't know. It, it can make that figure more imposing in some ways. It can make them more respected, like make more of a father figure or leader of whatever. I mean, a it, 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 it number of things. Uh, but no, I, I think I think you could add to it. I really do. Definitely a positive. So what about the figures that don't? What about the figures where it's just kind of... Oh put on there, you know, like most hmm. of the headmasters from Titans Returns. Well, like on, on on that note, where there's no fiction to, to necessarily support it, eh, it, it depends. Um, in some instances, uh, if the toy is designed well enough, uh, well enough, it will sell on its own merits. Um, but there's a lot of times where, you know, if we don't know who a character is, we don't care who the character is because we haven't been given a reason to care. It's it, it's sometimes, you know, more likely to just sit on the sit on the shelf, assuming the store actually stocks their products. Yeah, Walmart. Yeah, right. 
But I, I didn't really think that the Titan Return characters were that bad. Like, cause I, I think it, it made the transformations better on some of them to, to that headmaster gimmick and the fact yeah. that you literally just took the head off to, to transform it or whatever. So I, I well, honestly didn't, it didn't bother me on some of those that, I mean, yes, like I would have rather gotten all of the headmasters at the time, but I mean, I don't know, give it time. I'm sure that like headmaster juniors and Scorponok, I'm sure will come out at some point. I really hope we get the Headmaster Juniors. They, they Me would too. Be, they would be sorely mistaken to, to bypass those. Uh, mainly because I'm such a massive, massive fan of Horrible. But, yeah. Okay, oh, um, yeah. But, no, as far as Titans Return, they actually they did rather well because they, they picked a good variety of figures. Uh, in the first few waves, you had the the uh, Decepticon uh, trio there with uh, Mindwipe and Skullcruncher and them. You had the the main four uh, headmasters from the Autobots, the Paladron with Fort Max. Uh, and then later, in the later waves, you got Top Spin and Twin Twist. You got the two Jump Starters. You got uh, the three Decepticon Target Masters. I mean, heck, you got you got Scourge. You got I don't know, Perceptor. Uh, but, but decent characters that actually had some decent fiction behind them. Maybe maybe I mean, not quite so much the, the jump starters. But, so, I mean, you know, part of records, but. one thing going back, you know, can you imagine today if they re release the exact same figure, um, but then they threw a Target Master in with it? Like what they did with G1? Like, you know, because yeah. the other ones, like. People would be so upset if they threw a scourge what in the and they just like, here, here's your target master. I, Isn't this I basically think... that? Well. It is, but it's a different character is what I'm saying. Like, it's not, when, when they threw it, that in with green light, like, I mean, it's, at least there's a new head and different colors. In, in, some, in some kind of ways, they, they have done something similar. Like, uh, they took a... Thrilling 30 Legends figure that had an accessory with it, a Target Master accessory. Cosmos. And they, Cosmos, and they released it later without that accessory. Uh, and the same goes with Shrapnel. The, the Insecticon Shrapnel. Granted, yep. Shrapnel is a slightly different hue of, of purple. And, and Cosmos, uh, Co- Cosmos is too. slightly remolded. No. Uh, because, it, it, yeah, the, 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 the Cosmos, the, the later reissue of it, uh, the peg on the underside uh, was left larger from when they used it for the Computron mold for, what was his name? Uh, Scrounge. Because uh, the Thrilling 30 Cosmos cannot combine with Strength, but the, the reissue can. Huh. I did not no, know that. No. I didn't know that either. But, but they, they have done that to a point. So I think if, if they were to do that in any capacity and, and include... You know, a target master or whatever battle master uh, that they, they've got now. Like, uh, what what are they what are they calling him? Uh, the hot, hot rods, uh, not firebolt, uh, fire drive. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, firebolt, I mean, fire were, drive, something like that. Yeah, if they were to include guys like that and you know repaint them, whatever, throw them in with some some remolded Titan Returns repainted. Uh, I think it could do all right. Uh, probably not on a Maybe not on a grand scale, but maybe a, a figure or two here and there. I think it'd be okay. Uh, they would probably have to change the shades or the details of the paint apps or something. So I want to go ahead and, and still disagree on the whole like headmasters that weren't headmasters. It really bugged me to like finally get a new cup toy that was trying to go like G1 style. Cause the, the, the generations figure that was like a, a different Still style was neat. I like, I like it a lot, but I wanted a G1 style cup. So I was really attached to cup as a kid. I really liked him cause he was like the fatherly figure or whatever. Yeah. And you know, I finally get something that's supposed to re- resemble it. And not only is he an ugly color scheme that didn't look right <laughs> until Japan released him. Um, but they made him a headmaster. And Cup isn't a headmaster. It wasn't right for the character. I didn't want that. Wasn't and 
Hasbro, on the... you bastard! Well, right. Wasn't it based on the toy color, though? Not the, yeah, not the Hasbro was, really, so. was based on the toy, and then Takara was based I, I on the so. toy. I thought so. It was hideous. Looking back on it, I, I like it. I really hated it when it first came out, but I actually like it better now. Hey, I'll, I'll be right back. Okay. After these messages. So. I, I mean, that's all fine and all. I just I just don't like getting characters kind of forced into it without a reason in the fiction. Like, if a character becomes a headmaster in a new series, you know, like, I, that hasn't happened much in the newer series, I know. But releasing the characters ahead headmaster then is cool. Um, putting the combiners, they put the combiners into the comic fiction. So therefore, you know, if if a combiner happened, then it's okay for Hound to be a combiner alum now because he happened in the comic sort of thing. Like, that's fine by me. But if there's no fictional reason for it, I'm not going to like the figure as much because I really do like them to represent the characters and I guess, like, for me, part of my action figure collecting is literally wanting one of everything that I've, like, enjoyed from a fiction perspective. So, like, if I watch an anime, I want a figure from it. So, with Transformers, you know, if I really liked a character, if I really liked a story arc, I want a figure of that character, but I want them done the way that I know them. So, I was really frustrated. We get the target masters without their target masters. <laughs> Well, I do th- find it ironic that in the fiction, uh, Galvatron was against headmasters like vehemently in IDW, but then Danny he, gets on, and then yeah, and then he was a headmaster. Like so, that that was pretty funny. Yeah, it, sometimes it just doesn't fit as well. I don't like it. Yeah. Um, like if it, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go on. Go. On. No, I was just going to say, if a character is defined by their minion, I want them to have it. So for the Decepticon target masters, I want them to have their minions. That's why I splurged on the LG versions, because, well, I really like the way those target masters look anyway, and I love target masters, but I wanted them to be complete. You know, like, how exciting is it to have a Soundwave figure that doesn't have Laser Beak and Ravage? Right, he needs his his little friends or pets or children or whatever you think of them as to really be the complete Soundwave package. So it's kind of a bummer when you get a character you're excited for, but they don't have their little buddy. I'm trying to think if there's any other like play pattern minions that we haven't covered. So we covered MicroMasters. Um, covered minion cons. Minicons. Um, we explicitly talk about Power Masters. Yeah. There's much to say. Yeah. I mean, they were an extension of, you know, what, what came prior. Yeah. Well, Power Masters were interesting because they, like, the way they enhanced the figure was all in your head. Right, like putting the Power Master in made the character much more powerful and able to use their super moves like Dragon Ball Z style, but it didn't really do anything for making the figure look better. It actually kind of made them look worse because they usually had some sort of chunk stuck in their chest at that point. They got a big beer belly. Oh man. So I, I think that's interesting that they did it that way because it didn't really enhance them. It's just kind of, it didn't enhance the look, but it was right. purely from a fiction perspective. So it was like, right. ooh, you put that in super mode. Right. Whereas when they did super mode in Armada in the other series and you powered them up with their mini cons, something happened. They did something. A port opened and a gun came out or their super arm activated or. Or Jim came back. Yeah. Or Jim came or back because she plugged in his mini con. Sounds weird. Um, what one thing, and and I guess we haven't talked <laughs> about, you know, um, the weaponizers from the new line. I think we have it. Such a fantastic idea. Like you know, when I first saw them, and I was like, well, this is really stupid. Like they all of them parts form and and all that, right? Like I was like, these are not going to be good. But then when they actually came out, I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, they they really are a ton of fun 
um, and, and can really like enhance the uh, the current figures. And the bad thing is, is I feel like with a lot of them, it makes me actually want to buy multiples of all of them because like you can make these like super modes of like stacking multiple ones on top of themselves, like the uh, the brunt figure that uh, that just came out. Um, and whatnot so yeah like they did a heck of a job with the new uh the new weaponizers i think and you say you don't like lego uh. <laughs> i don't like stepping on legos not fun unless you're into that i mean you Switch. might like stepping on legos i don't know yeah i mean th- there's people that walk across fire i mean yeah. I, I don't know if legos are quite as um, difficult as fire, per se. I mean, you never know. Have you is stepped that, on is a that Lego? a challenge? Yeah. I have stepped on a Lego. I have not stepped on a fire. Mm. Luckily. I've stepped on both, and they're not fun. Sounds like a fun science experiment. <laughs> yeah. Which one hurts science. more, fire or Legos? Mm-hmm. Plot twist: a Lego on fire. But see, that's another thing. Like you got the minion after you got the figure again with these things so it's kind of like how a lot of the target masters that are coming out in siege are the target masters that went to those um, lo- poor lonely titans return target masters mm-hmm. they need their friends i can go or, buy the store now they don't have paint or um, they're the same character look at uh, they- trigger happy it's the same character as his head yeah, th- that Same didn't dude. work out. With I totally have mentioned. the Target Master with the Titans figure. So he, he's mm-hmm. basically partnered with the same guy twice, and I think it's fun. Well, then, yeah, I can't really make a fictional reason that works. Um, yeah, there's, I, no, there's just, no good way to do it. Maybe one of them is a drone controlled by the other. Well, maybe... The, it, it worked the, in alternators. If you go person in a suit style, you can say that the person gets out of the head suit when the head plugs in and gets into the gun suit so that the gun is guttier. And then when they turn back into a vehicle, they get into the head suit and pilot, and the gun just yeah. goes on as a turret. My God, this would be a weird conversation to anybody that didn't know we were talking about uh, Transformers. Absolutely. I overthink oh, everything. Yeah. When, when the person I, gets out of the head suit, about. gets into the gun suit. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Yeah. I'm not apologizing for that one. That was very critical thinking going on here. Right. Um, but I think I think it's the same for Hot Rod, too. Uh, the, the Firebolt or Fire Drive, whatever you want to call him. I, I think yeah, he's I think so. the same character, too. Yeah. And now at least we have his gun. But that that really frustrates me. Like, I refused to buy that Ricochet when he came out. As a, was he a select? He was a select, right? Select, yeah. It was... Yeah. The mold was very was, good. Ricochet is... Ricochet or Stepper. The oh, oh the, the Jazz repaint. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah. yeah, that one. Stepper, that for swoop. me is defined by being a target master. Like, that's who he is to me. So not giving me his little gun friend made me go and buy a third-party figure to have a stepper in my collection instead. Which, because, which gun was he partnered with? Uh, was was that a, Fracas? Was, was that the one that came with Scourge in the States? Um, I honestly do not remember now. I want to say everyone's partner is Nightstick, just because. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's it. I think it was nice, Dick. Everyone's partner is tight, sick. Our fire stepper. Because why not? Hey. Um, but yeah, that that literally kept me from buying the figure, though. That like he didn't have his little friend, because he has to have his little friend, or he's a real. My little friend would be a social. Yeah, social can't party. talk to anybody like that. Like I said, I went out and got it somewhere else. I went out and found it from Make Toys, and it's well, uh, Toys the Target Master isn't even figure. good. Yeah, the figure is good, but the Target Master sucks. Whereas with Artfire, his friend, um, it's the opposite. 
our fire isn't so great, but his target master is the target master of target masters. Mm-hmm. That art fire, that that mold is pretty good. I don't know. You're you're saying masterpiece Inferno is not good. I don't really like it. Not compared to Backdraft from MC. That's way cooler to me. Yeah, you have really options. Cool. Because that was your Inferno. first high end figure, and I think that uh, Lucas is triggered. <laughs> your, 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 your nostalgia is uh, was, was, that a, was that a Target Master pun, Jack? Yes. Okay. Oh, well, it was hilarious. <laughs> oh, kind of. <laughs> I didn't really think of it till now, but yeah, technically. Um, but I want to say that I I don't like the way that um that mold ended up looking as a as a robot. Like he ended up kind of that um bigger, chunkier version that he was as a universe figure. Um, you know, every fire truck guy was kind of a bigger, chunkier guy, whereas the G one figure felt like a skinny cool robot thingy and i feel like um i feel like the the mmc figure captures that a lot better but that's not the topic today <laughs> the topic is is many we'll talk about repaint some other day wink wink <laughs> always so what do you guys think of the on paired minions because that's that's probably the last thing we really have to address so something new we've got in in siege is we've got in minion type figures that don't technically have specific friends to go live with. Yeah. So like you get this this axe bird, and you know I've paired it with Ironhide, but they clash terribly color wise. Are so, we sure that those aren't already characters from Action Masters, but just renamed? Are they? I I, I wasn't sure. That's why I, that, I was asking. I'll ask everyone too. Yeah, I thought they well, were well, new characters. Well, let us know in the comments so we know what the freak we're talking about. Yeah. If you could. Yeah, because the little bull guy, isn't that guy new too? Yeah, the, the bull I'm pretty sure is new, but the, the pterodactyl bird thing I, I thought was with like Soundwave or someone in Action Masters. I Might be an Action yeah. Master homage. Maybe. I, I was thinking it was. Lionizer was someone, right? Absolutely. Lionizer, I was very happy to see. And I'm still disappointed they didn't do him in orange. Uh, he was partnered with Rad, which was one of the action masters I got as a kid. And so uh, Rad with Lionizer is right up there in sentimentality with characters such as like Horrible or Rough Stuff. You know, ones, ones that I have an attachment to. So. Um, and given Hasbro's pattern that I, I okay I, I'm speculating that it's a pattern uh, based on my own observations I don't know if it's actually a thing or not where Hasbro will release a version of a figure or hint toward a figure and then one or two lines later they'll release a decent version of that figure I'm thinking I feel like that too I hate it yeah I, I think we're getting a rad here soon. I really do. I think they're after Siege is done. I think they're going to start going hard into uh, uh, the rest of the Micro Masters as well as uh, into Action Masters. Like when we got that adorable Repugnus baby, and then we actually get a full size Repugnus afterwards. Yeah, yeah, or Shockwave. Yeah. Shockwave. Shockwave. I mean, Lecter. Hello. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. And we, first, we got the Thrilling 30 reflector, and then we got the the little shock waves, and then the Botcon had the, the reflector uh, triplets. And now we've got made out of shock wave. And even still, it's getting a toy accurate version. With even yeah, more so camera I get a parts. Yeah, gun version. Uh, yeah. It, it, it's like you, you can almost guarantee if, if they've mentioned it or released a part of it or something we're probably going to see it on down the line that's why i'm still yeah. holding out hope and crossing my fingers toes eyes everything else i've got a pair of mm-hmm. yes everything mm-hmm. that we're going to get a horrible and a rat i mean we're, we're getting we're getting slam dance for crying out loud yeah Grant, it's a person i think any anyone is yeah. is on it's the table so. now so. yeah I was actually testing with uh, 
uh, was it, yeah, uh, Battle Trap? Yeah, uh, Battle Trap from uh, Power of the Primes the other day, trying to see if I could fashion some kind of Squawk, uh, squawk Talk of Beast Box mode out of them. It didn't work. Uh, I kind of figured. Uh, see, like with Slam Dance, that's another illustration of what I was talking about earlier. That's a character who was a Minions. Yeah. I know I turned it into plural. And now it can't be a Minions anymore because they're not going to fit in Blaster. Like you can try to shove them in, but mm -hmm. you can't reject yeah. them. It's kind of sad. Could they still be friends? Maybe, maybe maybe get some butter, uh, like some country crock, or <laughs> yeah, grease it up a little bit. Just need some twist. lube. You know. To um, me, I just I well, really yeah, like you believe, minions get to go with their friends. Do we uh, <laughs> do we do we have any final thoughts? I know we uh, we're, we're coming up on an hour. Hmm. Don't think I have anything more. Do you think? I, I okay, do, let, let, let me, me ask this. Oh, sorry, go on. Let, let, let me ask this of everyone. Do you think going forward, you know, not, just, just looking back on how the brand has been so far these past 35 years, do you think going forward that sidekicks, minions, partners, whatever you want to call them, are going to be as important, more important, or less important in the future? I think about the same. I, I think that they will always be important to the brand because, um, you know, selling smaller figures is important, like, especially for, like, little kids and whatnot. Like, you need something at that cheaper price point. Um, so I think from that aspect, like, you're always going to want to have that stuff. And then I, I think that you're going to want kids to want to complete the set. So having a bunch of minions to go with, like, you know, Soundwave or, you know, Blaster or something like that, I think makes a lot of sense. Okay. I think it'll keep coming. I think, at least for now, it'll keep coming. Um, they figured out a price point that seems to sell at least decently at that $6 slot to give us little guys. So I think they'll keep coming up with a different little guy version for every line just to keep them going. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I, I think they're here to stay, especially now we've had a generation that has grown up, you know, watching Armada Jack. Yay. Yeah. I, I think they're here for the long haul. I still, am still as on the box though. Definitely. Uh, I'll just segue off that for my conclusion piece. I think they'll stick around because symbiotic relationships have been a part of Transformers fiction for so long now. I just think they're going to keep happening. The idea of having a team that's better together in one way or another, a target master that makes you better, a power master that makes you better, a mini con that unlocks your true power, that kind of stuff has just been in the fiction always. And it's pretty cool because it actually lets you have, like, at least in your head canon, a fun symbiotic relationship between characters that are like a team. But I think that they're going to keep doing it just because it's been such a big part of the fiction. And if you had a line without any sort of minion slash symbiotic relationship in Transformers, it would feel weird not just having at least one instance in an entire line. Mm. I feel like it's so you know, standard. Now, now that you mention that, I am having difficulty thinking of a line where that didn't occur in some form. I, I, I would almost say Beast Machines, but we got uh, that one, uh, what was it, uh, Magmatron or whatever, the combiner. It was part of Beast Machines. R.I.D. had it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Energon, Everybody's pretty much had combining. Even anime. Did Prime? Did Prime have any sort of little buddy friends? Hmm. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about buddies, but uh, I know I know Soundwave with Laserbeak and Rabbit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Plus, plus the armors and the Beast Hunters. They, they had the the armor snappy on parts. Yeah. 
Um, oh yeah. Heck, e- even classics. Bumblebee had the little jet ski. Mm-hmm. <laughs> little jet <jetpack. laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's right. I forgot about that little thing. I, I, I honestly, awesome. I don't think I'd ever realized that uh, before. But just about every incarnation of Transformers has had minions, sidekicks, partners combining in some form. Yeah, that's kind of neat. Tanya, it's a theme of symbiosis. It's actually kind of cool. Yeah, it's a, it, yeah, it's almost agree, yeah. if there was more to them than meets the eye. <laughs> so, so I do want to mention uh, if uh, if you like us and what we do, uh, consider supporting us on Patreon. Um, Patreon. So uh, had to do it. Sorry. <laughs> with, uh, uh, with, with the, your Patreon subscription, we do uh, additional content uh, that is available only to Patreon subscribers. Um, so if you would like to subscribe, you can do that as little as $1 per month. And that is at patreon.com slash TFYLP. And uh, we use that just to kind of make the show better, uh, to pay for software, pay for server costs, and uh, hosting costs, and all that type of thing. So, Plus they got to yeah. pay me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It doesn't yeah. sound cheap. Yeah, okay. Okay. Hey, you can't blame me for trying. So, uh, but yeah, with that, I guess uh, it's another episode uh, down. So I appreciate you guys joining me tonight uh, to, to talk about that. And uh, we will uh, see everyone next week. All right, bye. Bye. Kudosh. TTFN, ta-ta for now. Woo-hoo-hoo.